Hi and thank you for joining me. In this video we're going to take a look at the wonderful world of vectors. It's not one of the biggest topics in GCSE but it does try to confuse us a little bit by having different forms of notation and also of course those famous negative numbers. So let's see if we can sort this all out. <laughs> Let's start with looking at the definition of a vector. A vector is used to describe a movement. It describes the direction of a movement and also its distance. And specifically for our purposes, we are talking about movements on a graph. Let's just take a look at this first line here on the top right hand side of this graph. And I'm going to label the ends R and S. So we have two points. We have point R, and I've written the coordinates of the point here. It's at 2, 1. And we have point S, which is at 6, 4. So the red line between them is the line that describes the vector. And the red arrow shows us the direction. So the vector in this case is the movement from R up to S. Now, what is a little bit confusing is that there is more than one way to actually write down a vector. You'll notice in the centre here we have the letter A and it's in bold type. This is what you'll see on an exam paper when it's in print they use a bold type. You cannot do that with a pen and paper therefore if you're going to describe a vector this way you would write the letter A but put a little underline like that. It's the same thing. There is in fact another way you can describe this vector. You can simply write down the letters R, S and put an arrow over them. So a bold A, an underlined A and an R, S with an arrow are actually all different ways of saying the same thing and you can use any of these. Now let me take some of these away because the next thing we need to be able to do is describe this particular vector in terms of its movement. Now we can see the movement, it clearly goes from R up to S. But another way we can look at this is to look at the movement in terms of its movement on the X and Y axis. Because what this vector is doing is first travelling in an X direction, but also travelling in a Y direction. And all we need to do is work out how far it's traveled. So looking at the X coordinates here, it has gone from two to six. Don't forget it's going in the direction of the arrow. So it's gone from two to six. So two minus six, that is a movement of four. How far has it gone up the Y? Well, it has gone from one up to four. Therefore, it has gone up three. So on the y-axis, it's gone up 3. We write the 3 directly below the 4, and then we put a set of brackets around it. This is known as a column vector. So describing this particular vector, it has moved 4 along the x-axis, 3 up the y-axis, therefore 4, 3 is the vector. 3, 2, 1. Now let's take a look at another example here on the left hand side. We have the vector going from Q to P. We know it's going Q to P because of the arrow telling us it's moving in that direction. Let's call this vector B. I don't have heavy print so I'm going to write the B and put an underline. Now again we need to be able to describe its movement in terms of the X and Y axes. So in this particular one, this vector actually moves to the left before it goes up the y-axis. So let's have a look at the implications of that. It started at minus 2, it finished at minus 6, but don't forget it's moving left, it's going further down the numbers. Therefore, on the x-axis, it has moved minus 4. On the y-axis, it's gone from minus 2 up to 3, therefore it has gone up 5. 
So describing this vector as a column vector, it's minus four, five. And we've put the brackets a little tidier than I just did. So we don't have to say whether it's going left or up or down. The minus numbers do it for us. This is clearly moving to the left because of the minus four, and then it's going up because of the five. So vector B is described as minus four, five. I want to move on to some maths that we can do with vectors now, and I'm going to use this original vector on the right hand side here. It's a vector of four, three. So let's take this onto a new page. So here we've recreated the same vector just using the top right hand quartile of the graph. So we said before that R was at two, one, and that S was at six, four. And we've also said that the vector has a movement of four along the X and three up the Y axis. Let's say you were asked to multiply this vector by two. It's quite simple. All you do is take the top number four and multiply it by two. That becomes eight and three times two becomes six. Let's draw this on the graph to just show the effect of this. This actually means that what you are going to do is move along the X axis, not four, but eight. So that takes us from two up to 10. And then we're going to move vertically, not up three, but up six. So that's gonna take us from one up to seven. So we now have a new point here, let's call it T. And if we draw the line to continue from S up to T, we now have a new little point on the end of here. And you can see that the vector is now twice as long, but he does not change direction. You are simply continuing the line for double the length times two. And similarly, times three would take you further. You can go times 0 0.5, which would mean you would only end up halfway between R and S. Another common question that comes along in exams is where we're asked to add or subtract column vectors. This is not a complicated process. Let's say we have the vector three, four, and we are asked to add it to the vector six, two. It is literally a matter of saying six plus three is nine, and four plus two is six. The new vector is nine, six. And the same thing is true of subtraction. You simply take away the numbers. As always, be careful of minus numbers. Adding a minus is a minus and so on. And staying with the addition of adding and subtracting, this can also be done in diagram form. Let's have a look at this. We have a vector from P to Q, and this vector is described as vector A. We also have a vector that is moving from Q to R. We can see its direction by the arrow, and this is vector B. Now, if we want to show the movement from P to R, if you look at the diagram, to get from P to R, you would travel along vector A and then travel along vector B. So the vector, and let's use P to R with an arrow on top, the vector B to P to R, is the same as traveling on vector A plus traveling on vector B. So P to R in that direction is the equivalent of A to B. So if you know A and you know B, you can add them together and you will find vector P to R. One thing to be careful about like this, and let me just go back a step and change one of the details here. Let me change the direction of this vector here. So we now have vector A, which is P to Q, and we have vector B, which is now R to Q. It's going in the opposite direction. Now, if we are set the same task to describe the movement from P to R, that particular vector there, what we have to do is go along 
vector a first p to q now we are traveling now from q to r but we're told ve vector b is r to q therefore we are going along it backwards we are going in the opposite direction therefore it is minus vector b we're still making the same trip we're going from p to q to r but if we've been given the vector b it will include the column vector to travel in this direction therefore to go in the opposite direction we have to take it away so from a tutorial point of view that's about all there is to vectors at this point it's not the most complicated of topics but like a lot of things in maths it can sometimes take a little while to get your head around it I would recommend after watching this video find yourself some past exam questions on vectors and have as always I do hope that's been of some use to you if it has please hit all the buttons as usual the subscribe button is going to appear just below there's the like button the notifications and do feel free to take a look at some of my other videos there's one at the side of me here I hope to see you again thank you